Hey Indies, welcome back to my channel. So today I am coming to you with another video under the business side of fashion and we're going to be talking about rental agreements. Now, this right here is so important and I am super excited about it and the reason why is because if people are renting garments from you, you should be compensated, okay? We're not renting garments for free anymore. It's just times out for that, especially when they're your samples, okay? They're, you know, the, the one of a kind pieces that, you know, you produce or whatever. So what I find is that independent designers, especially custom designers, you know, we make super dope pieces and a lot of the times they are one of a kinds and people are often requesting for pulls, okay? So if you have someone in your inbox, your DM, your emails requesting for pulls, you need a rental agreement in place for that because you should be paid for your time, you should be paid for the length of time that someone wants, that someone wants to rent your garment. All of this is about keeping you know the overhead in line and being compensated for the work that you do all right you guys so without further ado let's get into it first things first without even going further i make sure that i put under my garment um i mean my rental agreement that no refunds are permitted on custom or rental items people need to know you cannot get a refund you took it out the shop you're wearing it you need to pay me for whatever it is that I'm asking to do it. I like to start out with the garments that are going to be rented and the garment retail value plus the rental fee. So my rental fee is 35% of the retail cost. Okay, I want to be very clear. So what you would do is, let's say they want to rent four or five garments and you need to charge 35% of each garment and that'll be your total, you know, your total rental cost. The reason why this is important because you need to one, be able to cover yourself when you get those rentals back. If you are doing dry cleaning or anything of that nature, you need to be compensated for it and you shouldn't be coming out of your pocket for it. So that's the whole purpose of the rental. It's not just for you to make a little bit of money off of it, but it's also to make sure you can cover the cost for any mishaps if you don't require them to dry clean or whatever before they bring the garment back. So your rental period begins the day your rental is mailed to you and all rentals must be postmarked no later than five days after the event. Now this is should you choose to mail it off, that's if you're getting a pull and let's say it's in LA or something like that, but if they are picking up then it's going to start the day that it's picked up. A $10 um, late fee will be assessed for every day the rental is postmarked late. So if you rent something on a Saturday, they pick it up on Friday night, the rental starts Friday night. And when they bring it back, like the days, the amount of days that they have it, up until when they bring it back, they have to pay you for that. And if they decide to, let's say they was gonna bring it back on Sunday, but they don't bring it back until next Friday, they will be charged $10 per day for each day that they have the rental. And up to a certain amount of days, let's say two weeks, like 14 days, rentals that are not returned after two weeks will be considered a purchase and the purchase price will be invoice. Simple. If you do not return a rental within two weeks or on the confirmed date, then you will be invoiced or charged accordingly. And that will be for the full price of the garment, okay? Payment will be due. Uh, oh. Payment will be due immediately upon receipt. Please email us a tracking number on the return shipment. Every single garment that you have sent out, especially via mail or postage, you should receive a tracking number. You have to give them a tracking number for the garments. You get a tracking number. Come back. I also want to add that when you are getting asked for pulls and things of that nature, they should be providing you with an, an account number. You should not be paying for shipping yourself. All right, so I just want to add that in there even though I am going to talk about that a little later in the, in the video. Now, dry cleaning. Dry cleaning is included in the rental fee. Now, I know that some people choose to have them dry clean their items and then some people choose not. 
I choose not to have other people dry clean my items because they are my items and I know what's best for them. I also know, you know, what I need to say to the dry cleaner to understand what it is. Another thing that you don't want to do is allow somebody to take your items to like a dollar, you know, the 99 cent dry cleaning and then you get your items back. They're not they're not dry cleaned uh, appropriately, they're not washed appropriately, and your garment is messed up. You don't want to go through that. So I don't trust anyone to dry clean my garments. However, I add the dry cleaning fee into the rental fee, okay? So fees will not be assessed for cleaning unless the dress is returned with stain damages deemed to be severe. Now, this is like if you know, you say you're gonna dry clean it. Now, if it's something like there's makeup around the neckline or something like that, I try to be realistic. That's something you can't really control. But if I get my garment back and it's a nice silk, you know, silk shirt, and it has a big old oil stain or something on it, you will be charged accordingly for that. And accordingly for me is you have to pay full price for that garment. It's nothing I can do about that. You, you, you know, people gotta take better care of these clothes. And what I find is that when you are renting clothes out, especially to these stylists, they don't take care of your garments. They just don't. I don't know what that's about, but they really don't take care of your garments, and I really hate that. So you gotta put these policies and procedures in place to protect yourself. Shipping. Your rental must be part postmarked by the last day of the rental date, which is five days after your event, you are advised to purchase a tracking number. If tracking and or insurance are not purchased and the rental gets lost in the mail, you may be charged for the value of the rental, which will not exceed the full purchase price. Let me tell you why this is important. Again, you should be getting a tracking number anytime somebody is mailing your garments to you or you are mailing them to them. Um, that's just to keep up with the tracking. However, when you are shipping these garments out, the stylist or whoever should be paying for shipping. I understand sometimes we get excited, but even when you get these pulls for celebrities, you guys don't be fooled. These stylists for these celebrities should be providing you with a FedEx account number, a UPS account number, or whoever. Most of the time it's FedEx. A lot of the people that I've done pulls for, they always give a FedEx account number because in most cases they need the dresses like overnight or something of that nature I'm not about to come out of my pocket for a hundred and fifty dollar shipping two hundred dollar shipping I've seen shipping go up to three hundred dollars I should not be coming out my pocket for that and another thing is most of the times those account numbers that they provide you with they are getting discounts for them okay so just be very clear about what it is that you are shipping and who it is that you are shipping to. If people are telling you that you gotta pay out of pocket, especially for something that they request, you maybe need to just check, you know, what that what that stylist got going on or whatever. Um, I ask every stylist before I, we even go into details about what it is that they're renting, will you be providing a FedEx tracking number? Or will you be paying for the shipping? If they are not paying for the shipping, it is my discrepancy to determine whether or not I want to work with them. And so that's where I began to weigh basically the opportunity. How big of an opportunity is this for me? How big isn't it? Sometimes you're not getting a bang for your buck. And I just believe that in everything that we do, we must be compensated in some way, fashion, or form. All right? So just use your best judgment. All right? Now... Um, also under the shipping make sure you include the entire address you know make sure it's very clear very bold um, the address that they will need to return the shipping or the package to be very clear about that because sometimes people will be like well I didn't know where to send it to I didn't have an address so you know just make sure your ducks are in a row and I also make it very clear on my contract that we are not responsible for returning shipping costs, okay? So, we're not responsible for taking it out. We're not responsible for getting it back. Alright, late fees. Failing to have the rental or additional items included in the rental postmarked by the correct date will result in a late charge of $10 per day. So I'm basically reiterating the same exact thing that I did just discussed in the beginning of the contract. You have up to 14 days um, 
before you are charged the full amount for the garment. So just make sure you have that clause in there and you're protecting yourself so people can understand. You cannot come and pick up a jacket from here and just bring it back when you feel like it. I mean, just haven't you seen like where people will, they'll pick up something and they'll have your stuff for like three months. Three months. Three months. No, 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 no. Not, not Christian Omi Shine, not anybody. So again, this comes to us just getting our business in line, you know, setting those standards, setting those guidelines so people can know what to expect when dealing with us. We are businessmen and women and we should conduct ourselves as such. So this is just the bossing up process, you guys. It's time to boss up. All right, so fit of items. Christian Omi Sean is not responsible and will not issue a refund for rental items that don't fit. That has nothing to do with me. You can try to rent X, Y, and Z. You know, you think that she's a 10, you think that she's a 12. That has absolutely nothing to me. And you guys gotta do what you gotta do to protect yourself, okay? So, you wanna make sure that you have a clause in there just basically letting them know, you know, that you're not responsible for the fit or the item. Even if it's a custom piece that you have, it's already made. You have to do what you gotta do to make it work, all right? Alterations, any alterations that are done by CO must be undone before the rental is shipped back to us. You assume all financial responsibility for rental, I mean for rentals altered by any other entity. Fees may be assessed due to alteration damages. And that's just being 100. If they choose, they may have a seamstress on set or anything like that. If they choose to have the, alter, I mean the, items altered they are responsible for making sure that those changes that were made are undone and if they are permanent changes then you need to charge them accordingly okay don't send somebody a 14 and then you get a 10 back and then it's like oh well no at this point you need to pay full price for the garment and that's just what it is Krishna Mishan is responsible is not responsible sorry Christian Omishan is not responsible for wardrobe malfunctions. The effect a dress may have in performance, whether it be movement, dancing, or any other injuries that may result from a wardrobe malfunction. This right here is super important because we are in a different time now. You cannot be held liable because of what someone is doing while they're wearing your garment. So this is just a clause put in there, a quick disclaimer to protect yourself. I will not be held responsible for any wardrobe malfunctions and that's just what it is. So when you are requesting for a pull for these garments, you have to be very clear and upfront with them about the risk that they are potentially taking. Because sometimes the garments they, they request are things that we made a long time ago. Now I want to be clear, I do inspect everything before it goes out. However, sometimes certain things are just out of your control. And if she dancing like Janet Jackson or whatever it is, you don't want to be held liable for that, okay? So just make sure you put that little disclaimer in there to protect yourself. Cancellation of rental reservations. Rentals that are paid for and reserved for a rental but end up not being used will be handled the following ways. Cancellation up to two weeks prior to the event. And if they cancel up to two weeks prior, I will refund 100% of the fees paid for. This is if they didn't come pick it up or nothing like that. Now rentals that have been shipped and received by the renter will be assumed the full rental amount as we have no way of knowing if the dress was actually used or not. And this is important. Even if you ship something to someone and they say that it has been used or it has not been used, you are not responsible, okay? You gotta do what you gotta do to protect yourself. And that's just what it is um, because you don't have any way of knowing whether or not they wore the garment. And we see that a lot. Oh, I got a dress, but I didn't wear it, so I need my money back. This ain't Walmart, this ain't Target, or none of that. The policies and procedures are different here. So make sure you have a clause in here that protects yourself so people can know whether you use the garment or not, you still have to pay for it, period. 
All right, so rental ownership. Christian Omishan retains ownership of all rentals until such time that the ownership is transferred through a bill of sale. So, for instance, if I send out a garment, I am still the owner of that garment unless they pay for the full price of that garment for whatever reason. Once that happens, they will receive a bill of sale and that bill of sale is just saying that you are the owner of this. You have purchased it at full cost. It, I have no more responsibility or ownership over this garment, okay? All right, and lastly, full disclosure. The individual paying this garment rental invoice hereby states that all questions about the rental agreement have been answered, that they fully understand all the provisions of the agreement and the obligations and responsibilities of each party. As spelled out, they further state that they agree to fulfill the obligation in every aspect or suffer the full legal and financial consequences of their actions or lack of action in violation of this garment. Every single stylist, every single customer, I've had customers, I've had influencers request to pull garments. They have to sign a rental agreement. If you do not have one in place, get you one in place. It's a great opportunity. You get your garments back and you get a chance to make a little bit of money. Make sure you have all these clauses in place to protect yourself. I am definitely going to be coming with more videos regarding the business and legal side of the fashion design process you guys make sure that you leave me comments down below leave me a thumbs up like comment subscribe let me know how you're feeling about the business side of fashion if this is helpful for you let me know if you want to see more or you have specific requests please 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 let me know i am so excited to be doing this it's been a long time coming you guys thank you so much for tuning in as always stay hungry stay happy and stay blessed until next time peace